In this video, I'm going to discuss the Clostridia bacterial markers on the organic acid test from Great Plains Laboratory, and I'll explain why some people test for Clostridia, the difference between testing for Clostridia in the urine and stool, and I will also give some treatment options to address high levels of Clostridia. Before I begin, I just want to remind you that the main reason I put together these videos is to help people with different types of autoimmune conditions and other health issues better understand their test results so that they can find and remove their triggers, correct any underlying imbalances, and feel great again. I need to let you know that this video is not meant to be used as medical advice or as a recommended treatment protocol, and it isn't a replacement for consulting with a competent healthcare practitioner. The organic acids test from Great Plains Laboratory offers a comprehensive metabolic snapshot of a patient's overall health. It provides an evaluation of intestinal yeast and bacteria, markers for vitamin and mineral levels, oxidative stress, neurotransmitter levels, indicators of detoxification, and is the only organic acids test to include markers for oxalates. So why does Great Plains Laboratory test for Clostridia on their organic acids test? First of all, it's important to mention that not all strains of Clostridia are pathogenic. In other words, many species of Clostridia are actually commensal, which means that they're part of the normal gut flora. On the other hand, some species such as Clostridium difficile are pathogenic and thus can cause severe gastrointestinal symptoms and sometimes can even be life-threatening. By the way, throughout this presentation, I'll be referring to Clostridium difficile as C. difficile or C. diff. Clostridium botulinum can also be harmful as it produces botulinum toxins, which are neurotoxic. So the reason why Great Plains Labs test for Clostridia is because some strains can be harmful. On the organic acid test from Great Plains Laboratory, markers 15 through 18 are the Clostridia bacterial markers. When attending organic acids test workshops in the past, the instructors who taught the material recommend first looking at markers number 16 and number 17, which are more commonly elevated than markers 15 and 18. But if any of the clostridium markers are elevated, you'll also want to look at the dopamine metabolite homovanillic acid, or HVA, and I'll explain the reasoning behind this shortly. HPHPA, which uh, is marker number 16 and stands for hydroxyphenol hydroxypropionic acid. And I'll just say HPHPA from this point on. So this is a metabolite produced when byproducts of clostridium bacteria combine with human metabolites. Here you can see that there are three main species of clostridia that produce HPHPA. Of these three species, clostridium botulinum seems to be the most pathogenic, as I mentioned earlier how it has the ability to produce the neurotoxin botulinum. High concentrations of HPHPA inhibit the enzyme dopamine beta hydroxylase, which is involved in the metabolism of dopamine to epinephrine. This in turn causes high levels of homovanillic acid. And so this is why you also want to look at this marker on the organic acids test. It's also worth mentioning that there can be other causes of elevated levels of homovanillic acid, including heavy metal toxicity. 4 Cressel is predominantly produced by Clostridia difficile, which is a well-known pathogenic bacteria. 4 Cressel also inhibits the enzyme dopamine beta hydroxylase, and I mentioned how this converts dopamine into epinephrine, and thus can cause high levels of homovanillic acid. If 4 Cressel is elevated on an organic acid test, some would suggest getting a stool panel to confirm the presence of C. difficile before treating. However, Dr. William Shaw from Great Plains Laboratory says that it's possible to have a positive 4 Cressel but test negative for toxins A and B on the stool panel, but even when this is the case, treatment for C. diff is indicated. If someone has an elevated 4 Cressel and elevated homovanillic acid on an organic acids test, then I would feel comfortable treating for C. diff based on the elevated 4 Cressel, even if they weren't experiencing gastrointestinal symptoms. But of course, if someone has these positive findings and they are also experiencing symptoms, then it's even more urgent to treat the person. High 4-hydroxyphenyl acetic acid is associated with small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and you can see that not only is C. diff associated with this marker, but so are other Clostridia species. Once again, C. difficile can be distinguished from the other species by its production of 4-cressel, as none of the other species produce 4-cressel. Also, according to Great Plains Laboratory, it is likely that 4-hydroxyphenyl acetic is also an inhibitor of dopamine beta-hydroxylase, which means that HVA is likely to be elevated. 
High 3-enzoleacetic acid in the urine also relates to certain species of Clostridia, which you can see here. According to Great Plains Laboratory, no information on the pathogenicity of these species producing enzoleacetic acid is available. Let's briefly talk about the difference between testing for Clostridia in the urine and stool. There are over 100 species of Clostridia in the gastrointestinal tract, and C. difficile is the only one that is commonly tested for. I've spoken about the GI map comprehensive stool panel in other videos, and this tests for the two main toxins produced by C. diff, toxin A and toxin B. However, under the normal bacteria flora section of the GI map, there is a general marker of Clostridia, but the problem is that this marker doesn't differentiate between pathogenic and non-pathogenic strains of Clostridia. So for example, if someone is infected with C. diff and they get the GI map, then this should show up on the first page on the pathogenic bacteria. But if someone has a different pathogenic strain of Clostridia, such as Clostridium botulinum, then this won't be detected. As I already mentioned, the organic acids test not only tests for the Clostridia metabolites, but it also can measure the inhibitory effects of the Clostridia metabolites on the enzyme dopamine beta hydroxylase, and as I already mentioned earlier, you can tell if this enzyme is being inhibited if homovanillic acid is elevated. I keep on mentioning homovanillic acid, or HVA, and here you can see it on the report under neurotransmitter metabolites. And you can also see that it is clearly elevated. I think it's a good idea to demonstrate how the clostridium metabolites can affect dopamine beta hydroxylase and lead to an increased homovanillic acid. So... Here we see, on the left, we see Clostridium difficile, or C. diff, and so this produces 4 cresol which of course you saw on the organic acids test, and this inhibits the enzyme dopamine beta hydroxylase. And then on the right side, you have multiple Clostridia species, which produce HPHPA, which again you saw on the organic acids test report, and the HPHPA can also inhibit dopamine beta hydroxylase. And you can see here that dopamine beta hydroxylase is important in the conversion of dopamine to norepinephrine, which in turn converts to epinephrine. And these both lead to another marker here. But we focused on homovanillic acid. So when dopamine beta hydroxylase is inhibited, that leads to the buildup of dopamine. And that leads in turn to an increase in homovanillic acid or HVA. Before discussing the treatment options for Clostridia, if you like this video so far, please do me a favor and click the like button below. Let's briefly talk about the treatment options for Clostridia. Clostridia can be challenging to eradicate, and the reason for this is because they form spores. When speaking with the practitioners from Great Plains Laboratory, they recommend to initially treat Clostridia with antimicrobial herbs daily for two weeks, but then after the two-week period, they recommend treating Clostridia every three days, which essentially catches them off guard and makes it easier to eradicate them. For this reason, you would not want to treat Clostridia and Candida at the same time, at least not with antimicrobial herbs, as some of the herbs that affect Candida will also affect Clostridia, and so if you're taking herbs on a daily basis to address a Candida overgrowth, it will be challenging to eradicate Clostridia. Because of this, Great Plains Lab recommends to first treat Clostridia, and then to treat for a Candida overgrowth. As for what to specifically take, a broad-spectrum herbal antimicrobial such as biocidin is commonly recommended, and there is evidence that Saccharomyces boulardii can also be helpful in the eradication of C. difficile. Some companies also offer homeopathic remedies for C. diff, and this is something to consider if someone has an elevated 4 cresol but does not experience any gastrointestinal symptoms. I also should mention that prescription antibiotics are an option to consider for some people, especially if someone has C. difficile accompanied by severe gastrointestinal symptoms. I'd love to hear what you thought of this presentation, and so please post a comment below or feel free to ask me any questions related to the Clostridium markers. And to get my latest videos, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell to be notified every time I release a new video to help you better understand your test results.